matchup in Cincinnati sent the tone for the 1985 San Diego Chargers season. This game, like nearly every game to follow, offered ample evidence that the Chargers were the most thrilling and entertaining team on cleats. Draw play, Lionel James got a big hole. 50-45, breaks in the secondary. 25-20, they go all the way. 10-5, touchdown. In an offensive battle that saw footballs fly and records tumble, the Chargers rode the churning legs of number 26, Lionel James, whose 316 all-purpose yards paced a fourth-quarter comeback. After James scored the tying touchdown, the Chargers' defense delivered the knockout blow. Two running backs behind Esiason, tied at 41. As they go with a run to the right side, loose football. The Chargers are there, the Chargers recover. Billy Ray Smith filling the hole and just met James Brooks by the shoulder pads, and he drops the ball. Opportunity, it's knocking. Bob Thomas answered Opportunity's call with a last-second field goal for a 44-41 victory. Just one of many amazing stories in the 85 Chargers campaign. The Chargers have long been regarded as football's crown princes of excitement, but in 1985, they surpassed even their own standards. Once again, head coach Don Coriel and his staff stayed a step ahead of the pack with innovative offensive strategies that returned the Chargers to their customary status as pro football's most explosive team. There were familiar faces who formed San Diego's offensive arsenal, but team ownership also saw to it that new stars were brought in making the Chargers more dangerous and potentially better than ever. These fresh faces would be vitally needed because the Chargers played their football on the cutting edge. Ten of their games weren't decided until the final minute. 
half of those on the final play. The Chargers were a team on a tightrope. Athletes who drenched every game with spine-tingling drama. In the end, they posted their best record in three years. And they also proved to everyone that for sheer excitement, the San Diego Chargers are quite simply the most electrifying franchise in the NFL. The 85 Chargers would travel in style, setting the table for the future with some hungry new athletes. First was a new punter, rookie Ralph Majenko. The healthy return of Derry Nelson, number 55, helped bolster the special teams. Retirements and injuries completely revamped San Diego's offensive line. Anchoring the unit was 17-year veteran Ed White, who has now played in more games than any offensive lineman in NFL history. I think it's fun working with young people, you know. I like working with uh, people that are a lot younger than I am uh, numerically because, I, you know, it keeps me that young myself, and I just feel like I'm, you know, the same age as they are, so that's always fun. I thought the offensive line in San Diego this year has done a fantastic job. Jim Lachey, as a rookie, has played as well as any rookie lineman I've ever seen. Donnie Masick has probably had his best year at center, and I think he's one of the top two centers in football today. Dennis McKnight came on at guard and just played fantastic, and Sam Clappen had a great year at tackle. The line found itself blocking for a new quarterback in the season's early weeks when an injury to Dan Fouts put Mark Herman in the starting lineup. Herman responded by leading the Chargers to a come-from-behind win against the Chiefs. Mark actually led the league in passing for a few weeks and finished the season with better stats than several NFL starters. The biggest influx of new faces occurred on defense where the Chargers sought to correct past ills with future stars. Many players from the previous year were now gone, replaced by eager youngsters anxious to gain the experience necessary to building a successful defense. Some early signs of progress came from the defensive line, one of the youngest units in the NFL. Chuck Ian, Earl Wilson, Fred Robinson, and Lee Williams led the Chargers to their best sack total in the last four seasons earning such numbers with a determined attitude to finish any job they started. Williams, number 99, was a man of many talents. He scooped up loose fumbles, batted down passes, and even grabbed interceptions when the opportunity came his way. Williams also led the squad in quarterback sacks, accounting for nearly one-fourth of the Chargers' team total. While the defensive front was striving to earn a name for itself, the Chargers' linebacking core had already made its mark. Their two-fisted approach in the 3-4 scheme made them a reliable part of the San Diego defense.
three straight seasons with the same starters bred a continuity that showed results. In 1985, Billy Ray Smith, number 54, assumed a leadership role, then backed it up by earning Charger Defensive Player of the Year honors. Smith's run-stopping skills blended well with 10-year veteran Woodrow Lowe, number 51, who led a group of ball-hawking pass thieves. Teamed with the pass-rushing skills of Lyndon King, number 57, the Chargers linebackers lent stability to a defense that was searching for the right combination, particularly in the secondary. Even with the youngest pass defenders in the league, it would have been a mistake to assume youthful also meant playful. Hard-hitting Gil Burr, number 22, was quick to set a punishing example that was followed by rookies Wayne Davis, Jeffrey Dale, John Hendy, and Terry Lewis. Third-year corner Danny Walters, number 23, led the club in interceptions. Despite the secondary's inexperience, only one team in the AFC swiped more passes than the San Diego Chargers. Even during their learning process, the San Diego defense made important contributions, particularly in two late-season games. encounter with the powerful Broncos, the Chargers completely shut down Denver's running game, punctured John Elway's pass pocket, and forced a critical second-half turnover that led to a decisive 30-10 win. In Week 13 against the Bills, San Diego logged four sacks and four interceptions while yielding but a single touchdown. The biggest play of the game came from rookie John Hendy, who put the finishing touches on San Diego's 40-7 victory. Play action, Matheson pass intercepted. Intercepted on the far sideline, and he may go all the way on a return, 40-35. Long gone, 2015 touchdown, John Hendy. The Chargers defense, young, learning, and quite capable of creating some excitement of its own. One of the most newsworthy San Diegans of 1985 was Chargers owner Alex Spanos, who helped design the team's new uniforms, then tailor the roster with fashionable new players. Spanos added more members to the Chargers family by signing USFL stars, like wide receiver Trumaine Johnson, number 83. Another addition was fullback Tim Spencer, number 43 who protected San Diego's quarterbacks in passing situations, then rushed for a team leading 10 touchdowns when the ground game was employed. The plan was for Spencer to block alongside rookie halfback Curtis Adams, number 42, an eighth round summer camp sensation. But when Adams was injured in the first week of the season, Alex Spanos opened the vault one more time. What that money bought was one of the most exciting young talents ever to wear a Charger uniform. Halfback Gary Anderson had posted some impressive numbers in the other league, but could he do the same in the NFL? The fans didn't have to wait long for an answer.
I guess it's great for, I guess, a uh, black like me to come to an office like this, especially when you get in the category like receiving and, uh, and rushing, uh, something I've been doing ever since I've been in high school. Something most Chargers hadn't seen since nursery school was a San Diego kickoff return for a touchdown. But Anderson ended a 23-year drought with this coast-to-coast -coast run back against the Broncos. With Anderson's arrival, the Chargers added a versatile weapon that created even more opportunities for the innovative strategies of the Chargers coaching staff. The Chargers were the best offense in football because of great players and a continuous involvement of offensive ideas that kept the opposition totally bewildered. We run a type of offense that everybody on Sunday afternoon runs in their backyards and at the beach. It's the type of offense that you can draw up in the sand and say, you go here, you go there, and the quarterback spots you and throws you the ball. We're similar to that. The only difference is that we're very organized with it. Different people do different things, and it's very creative. With again the three backs, the run, Buford McGee pitches back to Anderson. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Chargers running that option pitch play. Each year as the season goes on, uh, defenses are always changing, trying to stop us. And we're fortunate enough to have enough personnel to be able to implement a number of different types of offensive systems. And I've got to be one of the luckiest men in the world to play quarterback on this football team. The Chargers are rather fortunate to have Fouts, who despite missing action in five games, still made the Pro Bowl while tossing 27 touchdowns. Many of Dan's passes found their way into the reliable hands of tight ends Pete Holohan and Eric Sievers. At midseason, the Chargers got another boost with the return of Kellen Winslow. Winslow had worked hard to battle back from serious injury, and by the final weeks, he was once again flashing his all-pro form. Kellen's return strengthened an already deep receiving core that afforded Dan Faust the luxury of throwing anywhere to anybody with excellent results. Number 86 Jesse Benross was a tough special teams player and receiver who filled in when injuries sidelined any starter. Number 89, Wes Chandler, began the season on crutches. He ended it in the Pro Bowl with 10 touchdown catches and the second best receiving yardage total in the AFC. wasn't the only San Diego receiver to post impressive numbers. Still a marvel at age 38, Charlie Joyner used his head and his heart to compete with the Young Turks in the NFL. And I think I prepared myself knowledge-wise to try to overcome that lack of speed, that lack of quickness. And uh, if I can keep the zeal, the enthusiasm for the game, I think I can play the game for a long time, as I have. Pro football's all-time leading pass receiver just may go on forever. His quest for excellence made those around him better players, making the Chargers' passing game unstoppable, as the Pittsburgh Steelers found out in late December. Here is Fouts, back to pass, has time, looking long, wide open, is Chandler, nobody close to him. A catch at the Pittsburgh 35, he's gone! During a nationally televised Sunday night game, the Chargers carved up the AFC's leading defense for eight touchdowns in the third highest scoring contest of all time. Number 21, Buford McGee rushed for two touchdowns 
and when the Chargers trailed in the last minute, he executed the option pitch play to Gary Anderson for the winning score. Then the Chargers defense and a departing shot of its own. David Woodley, back to pass, fires to the left side, intercepted by Jeffrey Dale. On a return to the Pittsburgh, 35, coming to the near sideline, he can go. Jeff Dale cuts back, he's gone, touchdown. After this game, it would be hard to call anyone but the Chargers the most exciting team in football. One of the biggest stories of the 1985 season came from the smallest player in the NFL, Lionel Little Train James, authored a storybook performance that served as an inspiration for anyone who has ever dared to dream. During the college draft, everybody looks at you and they put you in the computer and the computer spits out the perfect athlete that comes out and it's going to be a dominant figure in the NFL. Uh, it's not that way. To look inside of a person, you can't measure a person's heart with a computer. You have to give that person a chance to show what he can actually do. Lionel showed plenty in 1985. He set an NFL record for all-purpose yards and yards receiving by a running back. His 86 pass receptions led the conference. Be it kick returns or circus catches, James was the little big man of pro football. Little Train has probably been one of the most pleasant surprises in, in my career to see a, the development of one player to go from basically a kick returner to a guy that we count on down after down. He's tremendously dangerous in the open field for a, a guy of his size. He has great strength, uh, very shifty moves, and he's very deceptive. He's hard to tackle. He breaks a lot of tackles and uh, he really wants to do well. He's, he's that type of guy that's not satisfied with the average. He wants to do the great job. In 1985, Lionel James was the most electrifying player on pro football's most exciting team. The little train that could helped the Chargers climb one of the biggest mountains of all when he led them to victory in the most thrilling game of the 85 NFL season. Week 10, Jack Murphy Stadium, Raiders versus Chargers. In seven previous tries, San Diego had come out second best to the silver and black. But that wasn't going to happen this time, thanks to Dan Fouts' 400-yard, four-touchdown passing performance. San Diego took an early lead on a touchdown pass to West Chandler, then earned their second score when Fouts spotted Lionel James, who accounted for 345 combined net yards, the second highest single game total in league history. Four times the Raiders took leads, but on each occasion the Chargers battled back to tie. The San Diego offense used all its weapons in the final minutes as Chargers, young and old, made clutch plays against their most bitter rivals. Gary Anderson blew past the Raiders to tie the game at 27, and in the last minute of regulation, with the Chargers still trailing by a touchdown, Dan Fouts hit ageless Charlie Joyner, sending the game into overtime. San Diego won the toss then were quick to hand the Raiders the suddenest of deaths. First and ten, tied at 34 with the Los Angeles Raiders. They will sweep to the right side with Lionel James. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! The ball game is over! In 1985, the San Diego Chargers were the most exciting team in football. Someday soon, they expect to be the best. This is the key to the ball game today. Anthony steals at the eight-yard line, and here come the Chargers. 
For the 35, he's got to beat Breach and he's gone. A 52-yard return for Anthony Steele. The six-yard line. Change. Cuts it back. Now tries to put a move on Louis Braden and James can forget about it. Bill, he had to run about 35 yards there to gain two. But though, Neil Womack shredded. Flag is down again. It'll be called against San Diego. Siebert in and out of his hands. Four passes already today, and we have not played two minutes that have gone in and out of the hands of receivers. This 52-yarder blocked by the Seahawks. It's down. Thomas, whoa, he lets it fly. And it is wide to the right. Plenty of distance. He got all of that one. So a timeout on the field. 13.07 to play in the first quarter. Now the ball spotted at the 37-yard line. Anthony Steele's back with Lionel James. Not a good punt at all. That is Lionel James in a dead run at the 26. Goes it across the 34. Now across the 35. James down at the 50-yard line. And again, special teams collapsing for Cincinnati early in this ball game. Tremendous upper body strength. That's Pete Hallahan in motion to the top of the screen. Bounce. Unload. Crossing pattern. That's Charlie Joyner. To the 23-yard line, it is fumbled, but the officials say the ball is down. Cincinnati, no fumble recovery. He's well. He helps everybody. First down, foul, hook and right, comes to the right side. It is caught at the 15-yard line and down immediately. That's only his second catch of 1985. Second down and short. That is Tim Spencer. He's to the 10-yard line and smothered there. Jim Spencer has a good following in the seats today here in Cincinnati, Bobby. They've got to go with Spencer. First down, bounce from the 11. Going to the one-yard line. It is cut there. It is Ben Dross again, the second-year wide receiver out of Alabama. Dross brings the Chargers out on third down and one. Going for it. And it is almost intercepted in the end zone and knocked away. Hot potato. <laughs> One for two last week. Go for one today. This time, Thomas sends it whistling through the uprights. And the Chargers are on the scoreboard with eight minutes and 18 seconds to play in the first period here at Riverfront. It's 3 to nothing, San Diego. There's Kinnebrew that Bob Kuchenberg spoke of a moment ago. He gets through the left side following Blados and Munoz and runs right into Woody Lowe. This Chris Collins with at the bottom of your screen. Siasen looking at him. Now unloads to Collinsworth. And Second and six. This is a good position to be in offensively. You see Collinsworth getting the ball. He is going to pay the price. But Danny Walters just lowers the head. How do you do, Chris? It's all year. The Siasen again looking at Collinsworth. It comes out to Kinnebrew. And he takes on Bill Bird head on and about demolishes Bird. <laughs> Third down and two from the 37. There goes Brook to the right side. Oh! And they did exactly what they wanted to do. They got San Diego to jump. Optimistic for a fine season this year. Third down and nine out of the shotgun from the 33-yard line. That's quieter in motion. Classic pressure. Now he unloads, and it is just underthrown. Intended for the rookie, Eddie Brown. And a flag is down. It may be a late hit on Esiason. Can intimidate him. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 76 defense, late hit on the quarterback. That's a big one. That's a big one for Cincinnati. The call to factor at all. The Bengals have put the ball in the air, and they'll do it again. Esiason going for it. Collinsworth, touchdown, Cincinnati. Or was it? He was out of bounds, and Collinsworth does not like the call. I don't like it either, Phil. I think he was not only in the end zone, but I think that he was contacted before he went out of bounds and should be a touchdown. We've got a good view of it here. All right, there's the contact. Now that's forcing him out of bounds. He does not get his right foot down, but that's because he was knocked out of bounds. Oh and that my. is a very controversial call. Oh my, now the officials are going to huddle again, and wisely so. The 
the touchdown. After a conference with the other officials, the rolling touchdown. From Riverfront, it's Cincinnati, 7-3. Cincinnati keeps Dan Fouts off the field for four minutes and 25. Fouts looking downfield, now unloads. That's Eric Sievers, the tight end, and he is knocked off his feet at the 36-yard line by Ray Horton. Cincinnati's defense rise to the occasion and do their part. James, the little train, running for the first down across the 42-yard line and knocked off his feet at the 43. Personal foul, 26 defense, unnecessary roughness. 15-yard penalty and a first down. West Chandler in motion. There's an the end around. Here comes Chandler and the charges have cleared it out. He's inside the 36-yard line. Louis Breeden. Bottom of your screen. The give right up the gut. That is Tim Spencer. The rookie out of Ohio State. He moves it ahead for a first down inside the 30-yard line. In history for games started. Right over the top, that's West Chandler. Step right around Robert Jackson. In motion again. Fouts looking at Chandler, looks him off, now looks back, unloads to the tight end. That is Sievers. He's got him just outside the 10 yard line, and he is dropped by Bobby Kemp. It was Ron Simpkins. There's the give right up the middle there. Spencer turning his way inside the five and knocked off his feet at the four. Sievers in motion. Fouts going to Sievers. away the Chargers their first touchdown of the afternoon you've got to expect a pass on this play the, the Bengals should not have been surprised somebody forgot to punch his ticket that's amazing Bob when you consider that the tight ends are no mystery to the San Diego offense Washington Esiason that's Collinsworth he's got it moves it across the 31 yard line it is forced out of bounds by Danny Walton Esiason may try and get it to Brown now he's been looking left now he goes to Brown right side and yes Cincinnati, Kinnebrew is out. On first and ten, Esiason. James Brooks is open. He gets it to Brooks on the screen. It sets up nicely. Brooks still on his feet at the 44 and goes down hard. Linden came with a trip tackle. This year, second down and two here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. That's Kinnebrew, tries the left side. Not much there. Woody Lowe bends down. A flag goes down. Illegal use of the hands. 76 defense. A push to the face. 10-yard penalty, first down. The 39-yard line. I mean, that's not a quarterback you're looking at there. Here's the reverse. It is Eddie Brown. And he gets a good block by Boomer Esiason. A big block by the quarterback, Boomer Esiason. I hope we get to see the quarterback throw a key block here because this is what they call a no-cleaner. Here you see Eddie Brown coming around. If we can get the quarterback getting the getting the key block, there it is. It's Lyndon King off his feet. That's what the Cincinnati, they call that a no cleater. And all of the uh, teammates of Boomer Esiason will chip in and give him about a $50 bill this week. A long setback, James in the slot. And Esiason has hit the ball, comes loose. And the Chargers have recovered the fumble at the 17-yard line. Oh, Big play Boomer. defense, Lyndon King coming through unmolested. Now because Boomer is a left-handed quarterback, his blind side is on the side of Lyndon King. Boomer never saw him separated from the ball. Big defensive play. He's there to pick up that blitzer, and I think he should have been more alert and ready to react to that blitz. Pete Hollihan, the tight end, right over the middle. Dan pays for that completion. He's knocked off his feet, a gain of 20 yards. Turner and James Griffin. On third down and seven. Out. Goes down. The ball's in the air. Oh, what a catch by Lionel James. Because they had a blitz on it. A edge. personal foul. A five-yard face mask penalty at the end of the run on number 31 defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Blitzing. Fouts really puts this one up. Uh, hope and a prayer. There's the face mask. Good call. 15 to 3, Dave Wilson, a couple of touchdown passes. Dan with time. Now out to the flats, and he's completed to Hallahan. 
who the Chargers say, Bob, has the best hands on this team. And that is saying something. That is a mouthful. That's Lionel James. Takes it outside. It's near the seven-yard line and is down there by Lewis Breeden. Years and don't have those numbers. Bounce. Right over the middle. Touchdown to Eric Sabers. His second of the afternoon. Clock stops with 8.55 to play in the first half of action. And it's the Chargers by 10. Esiason. He is sacked at the 25. Seconds NFL 85. Bob Costas, Pete Axel, Ahmad Rashad. Ball tipped up in the air. Oh, it's picked off by Cincinnati. James Griffin. Pass intended for Hallahan. Brooks in motion, Boomer Esaias, and wants to put it in play. Going downfield, he's got Collinsworth in the seam, and he is hammered down at the 22-yard line. Starting quarterback would be. Esaias going for the flag to Collinsworth, and he is out of bounds inside the one-yard line. But this man, Collinsworth, what concentration. A little out and up here. He's getting double coverage. The ball's on the way. He knows he's going to get hit here. Keeps concentrating on the ball, pays the price. That is why the man is all pro. That's got to be tough, Bob, when it comes to concentration, when you're looking at Gil Bird and the football. You know you're about to get hammered here. First and goal, Cincinnati. That's Book, the former Charger. Touchdown, Bingo! And uh, we've got ourselves a ball game. Breach hits the upright, and it comes right back at him. His first miss in more than a year and a half. He was perfect thus far in 85, 37 for 37 a year ago. Second down and 10. Esiason retreats to his own end zone, comes right over the middle. It is cut by Dan Ross at the 18-yard line. More than enough for a first down. Esiason, three-step drop, now scrambles left. He's got the pass completed. It is to Eddie Brown, and he's out of bounds just across the 26-yard line. They'll mark it officially at the 27. And thus far, Esiason has found the Miami rookie. This time, he won't find anybody. A flag goes down. So does Esiason at the 17. From the year, they have three thus far today. From the shotgun, on third and 11, Esiason to Collinsworth. He has the first down across the 32. Key play by the All-Pro Collingsworth. Good for your body. Third down and eight. Esaias and now the pocket collapses. It is tipped up and it is intercepted by Danny Walters. His second of the afternoon. And he is knocked off his feet at the 39-yard line. First down, San Diego. Bounce. Look at that protection. West Chandler has got it at the 24-yard line. Ray Horton, Ross Simpkins, and James Griffin combine on the tackle. The gain of 15. The clock continues to run. Two minutes, 46 seconds to play on the first half. And Tim Spencer, sweep left. Nobody running interference for him. So all he does is lower his head into James Griffin. Second down and two, San Diego. The give is to Lionel James. He's across the 15 and knocked off his feet near the 14. In motion is Hallahan. Bounce. Looking for Seaver. Seaver's wide open. And bounce overthrows him at the goal line. Oh, Eric Seaver's had about five steps on Ray Horton. Superman coming over the top there. Reggie Williams coming over the top. Bob Thomas. He nails it. Oh, Thomas has been on it today. 27 seconds to play in the first half, and it is San Diego now by seven. Cincinnati mistakes. Tip balls passes the Chargers have come down with Bob and by and large that has really been the difference of this ball game the Cincinnati turnovers well it has Phil the Cincinnati team has turned the ball the ball the ball over but also the Chargers have returned the favor I of Dan Fouts and the Chargers they'll turnovers five in the ball game the Chargers two interceptions the Bengals a couple of interceptions on a fumble the kick will come to Mike Martin at the three yard line across the 30 the 35 and finally forced down out near the 45-yard line. It is Jesse Bendros. Esiason with time on second down. That's Kennebrew. Oh, for a guy 6'1", 
Make that 255 pounds. He got up in the air. All right, if you do lose it, you have to regain it, though, at the proper time. Esiason looking deep, going deep. Collins wears. Is it intercepted? Yes, it is. And now it is being called pass interference. Danny Walters going up over the top of Chris Collins, where the flag is down to 16. Charles Alexander is in the ball game as a blocking back. Esiason unloading for the post. Touchdown, Collins. and what a catch. This Collingsworth, he's having some kind of day. Good coverage on the play. The ball had to be thrown right there. Grabs it in, one foot down, two feet down. 20, San Diego and Cincinnati. Bounce the alley-oop, that's Joyner. He's got the football and he is tackled at the 42-yard line. There is a more courageous player in the entire league. That's Lionel James. He's to the outside, it could go. A close line at the three-yard line. James, 38 yards. It's been much more of a factor than Tim Spencer so far. Up in the air. Is it caught? Wait a minute. Touchdown, San Diego. Pete Hall ahead. Oh, what a catch over James Griffin. 12.43 to play in the third period. The Chargers have struck. They lead it by a touch. Again, embarrassed last week, and they're very frustrated, and you're seeing it. Uh, come out right now. Kristen 10, Esiason. There's a little delayed draw. That is James Brooks. Oh, my. To that phone. Esiason looking at Collinsworth. Now comes near side. That's Brooks. He's got it. Cincinnati, 11 minutes and 5 seconds to play in the third period. We are tied at 20 all. And there goes James Brooks to the 45-yard line. And back in core. That's probably the nucleus of their defense. And other than that, they've got a lot of improvement, of course, in the front three and the secondary as well. Stanford Jennings getting the first down, moving the ball to the San Diego Charger 43-yard line. Have to suffer for, from an inferiority complex uh, playing on the same team as Dan Fouts and all the All-Pros. Stanford Jennings has it at the 41, and he is down. 8.30 to play, third period. Phil Stone along with Bob Kuchenberg. Oh, we have a dandy here at Riverfront Stadium. Messiahson sideline. It is cut by Collinsworth. And he dies out of bounds as Woody Lowe could not get a hand on him. First down and 10 from the Charger 30. Quick hitter right up the middle. That's James Brooks. And he moves it straight ahead to the 22. Second down and short. That's Brooks. Can he get around Lyndon King? Indeed he can. And he goes out of bounds after gaining the first down at the 17-yard line. Now that's what raw speed does for you, Phil. Actually, Lyndon King played that Diagnose that very well. First and 10 from the 17, Esiason. Up the middle, the middle, he's got Dan Ross inside the San Diego four-yard line. What a route Dan Ross ran. Go over the center. Wide open, gonna pay the price right there. But Danny thinks he's tired of football yesterday. <laughs> James Alex, Charles Alexander, the running back. It gives the Kinnebrew to the left side. He is stacked up at the two, continues to dive ahead. And oh, what an effort. Touchdown, bingo. The clock stops again, this time with six minutes and 42 seconds to play. And Kinnebrew brings the Bengals even. Back at the goal line for San Diego. Tied at 27-27. It'll be Lionel James at the goal line. And here comes the little train. Oh, he's got some room. A flag is down at the 10-yard line. It'll be called back. Oh, my. A flag is down way back at the 11-yard line. A 100-yard return, and you can bring it back. Having video difficulties, so until we can restore them, we want to take you to Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, the Broncos and the Falcons. Jim Breach is set to kick it away following a touchdown pass from Boomer Esiason to Stanford Jennings. Here's will begin there. First time they have trailed since the early going of this ball game. Taking a look at the touchdown here, Boomer does a great job of eluding the tackler there. I question whether he should throw the ball because he had clear sailing on the run, but obviously he knew what he was doing here. Excellent juggling act here by Stanford Jennings. Second down and 10 now. Bounce right over the top. That's Hallahan. 
And he's got a first down out across the 43-yard line. What a job Pete Hollihan did getting in front of Jimmy Turner. Right in his face. There's the draw play. Good call. James into the secondary, and now it's a foot race. 43 yards. James outrunning Bobby Kemp. Touchdown, San Diego. What a call. I love it. What a call. The third period of play. The Bengals and the Chargers draw even again. Deadlock at 34 each. Esiason, 22 of 34, 263 yards and three TDs. He's hit just as he releases the ball. Oh, is he leveled by Earl Wilson, the rookie out of Kentucky. Looks in motion. Esiason wants to put it up again. This time he's looking for Eddie Brown, and he's got the rook at the 45. Show and blitz. Got six men up on the line of scrimmage. And they're given blitz. But the quick hitter to James Brooks is successful to the 39-yard line, a gain of 16 yards. Third and 10. The size of pumps once. Collinsworth is wide open. And he cannot come down with the football. And Siason hung it up, and that gave Gilbert all the time he needed. One of the Charger defenders slipped and fell down at the 20-yard line. Collinsworth is not getting up. Took the ball a little bit too much. Gave Gilbert time to see him coming in 22. Chris goes really high, reaching the ball at the pinnacle of his leap. Comes down. Oh, there it is. Come down very, came down very hard on the arm and shoulder, and he's not up yet. So an injury timeout with 13.57 to play in the final period. The Bengals with a touchdown in the first period. They got break offense of the San Diego Chargers is on. Chris Collinsworth being worked over on the near sideline. A third and seven now. Fouts. There's a quick release. Lionel James has the ball, and he is punished at the line of scrimmage. Bobby, the enforcer, Kemp. Showing a big rush. They're dropping off now. Mojinko whistles a beauty. Backing Martin up to the 35. He crosses the 44 out near the 45 and nothing else. Boy, for Mojenko, a 52-yard punt. He's cinching it up. We'll see him some more. Esiason to give his right up the gut. That is James. But boy, look at him maneuver. He's at the 47-yard line and down. A pickup of eight, maybe nine. Sanders. There's a little three-step drop. Collins where it has it. And he is tackled almost immediately by Danny Walters. A first down at the 36-yard line. And again, Collinsworth slow getting up. Like uh, the tackler coming from the inside pinned his ankle, which turned his right knee. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris has a sore right knee at this point. Chargers tied at 34. Esiason to give us the Stanford Jennings. Tries to take it outside. Can't find anything. But does, in fact, find Mike Green and Billy Ray Smith. Looking at Collinsworth. Now looks him off. The pass is to Dan Ross. Was the pass complete? I believe it was. And the Chargers will be awarded the football. Dan Ross drops up the ball. James is in motion. Bounce retreats. That quick delivery. That's James with the catch. And oh, if he gets away from Robert Jackson, he has got a bunch of turf to run on. Spencer and James, it'll be Lionel James, turns it upfield at the 35. He's got the first down out near the 39-yard line. Candler back in. Jesse Bendross is in. Joiner's there to give it to Spencer. And oh, my! Eddie Edwards leads the charge for the left side. And might take. Third and 11 fouls. Good time. Now throws. That's Joiner. He has the first down at the 50-yard line. And now, James Griffin is the name in that backfield. And that is James Brooks motoring straight ahead inside the 18 near the 17. On the road, they're, they've been put in a deep hole by their offense. They won in the third period. And they won more here on the fourth. That's Pinnebrew. And the chant here at Riverfront is Drew. Drew to the 10-yard line. Second down. That's Pinnebrew to right side.
Sox stop. 4.39 to play, and we are staged for a sensational touchdown on the board. They'd be deadlocked again. Fouts. Unloads. That's the tight end, Pete Hollihan. He is grabbed at the ankle at the 40-yard line and stopped there by Ray Horton. It has been an outstanding game. Fouts looking at Spencer. Now wants to go downfield. Going for James. He's got Lionel James. Touchdown, San Diego. A 60-yard strike from Dan Fouts to the little train. And oh, was it a beautifully executed pass, Bob Kuchenberg. Years ago was all everything in San Diego. Here you see the perfectly thrown. And at this point, they're not going to catch him. That's no speech. That's Robert Jackson chasing him here. But you can't catch the little train when he's got to step on you. What a play. Dan Fouts just put and laying the ball in there perfectly. And uh... now the question becomes, did the Chargers score too quickly? They leave Esaias in three minutes and 45 seconds to play, and the Bengals' offense will come back on. In points a week ago, the Bengals, 41 points. Esaias right over the top. That's Eddie Brown, and the reception at the 41. 244, 243. The give is right up the middle. The ball is on the carpet. And have the Chargers covered it? Yes, they have. San Diego has the football with only two minutes and 40 seconds to play. For the Bengals, Bob, their sixth turnover of the day. First and 10, San Diego. There is Lionel James. And he is handled effectively by Robert Jackson, trying to sweep the left side across the 40-yard line down near the 37-yard line of Cincinnati. Then over the top, that's Sievers. He has had a day this afternoon to the 30-yard line and tackled there by Reggie Williams. Fox. The pass is to Holohan. He has got the ball. And he is lassoed around the ankles at the 22-yard line by Robert Jackson. For touchdowns. There's Lionel James. Big hole through the left side. James maneuvers it down near the 17 and no more. A first down for San Diego. Rich. There's the draw. James, not much there. He runs head on into Tim Crumrod. Nine seconds to play. Bob Thomas is on to give the Chargers a lead. It's down. Thomas's kick is up. And it is good. The Chargers with four seconds to play. Bob Thomas, the newcomer on the block, has just staked Don Coriel's bunch to a 44 to 41 lead. That'll be the last play of the ball game. That is Stanford Jennings. Look for a whole bunch of laterals or Willie. You better pitch it up. There it goes. That's Charles Throw Alexander. it again. Throw it again. It is picked <laughs> off by San Diego. And that's the end of the ball game. David Crota in his second year out of San Diego State, the last man to touch the football in this wild and woolly affair on the artificial carpet in Cincinnati. Final, Chargers 41, 44, the Bengals 41. Do they get any wilder than this one, Bob? I don't know. It's getting to any time you see uh, two, two, two teams whose final score is in the 40s, you almost automatically assume that, that one of them is the San Diego Chargers. And over the years, the Chargers have certainly been involved in their share of, of high-scoring great games. Well, for the Cincinnati Bengal defensive unit, they were in Dan Fouts' face all day long, something that Sam White said they would have to do. But Dan passed 42 times today for almost 350 yards and four touchdowns. And Fouts was not sacked a single time today. White drops to 0-3. The Chargers go to 2-1. What a finish. San Diego, 44. The Bengals, 41. It was a long night at the Coliseum just 13 days ago as the Los Angeles Raiders defense overwhelmed quarterback Dan Fouts in the Charger offense. The Raiders sacked Fouts five times in the first half. San Diego was never in the game. With Marcus Allen busting into the end zone three times, the Raiders roll to a seventh straight win over San Diego, 34 to 21. Today, they're ready to meet again. They're ready to meet in beautiful San Diego, California, where Jack Murphy Stadium is sold out for this 50-second renewal of a long-time matchup dating back to the old American Football League. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy, an overcast, rather cool day in San Diego. It's going to be interesting to see which Raider and which Charger team shows up, Trump. A week ago, they were in different form from that Monday night meeting. The Chargers blew out Denver, their best performance in recent years, really. And the Raiders were embarrassed at Seattle. Uh, Don, I was very impressed with the Chargers' performance last week against the Denver Broncos. They did it running the ball. As an example, an old college play, uh, a play that, that Don Coriel used to use in junior college, a pitch 
by Buford McGee to Gary Anderson, the option. And Anderson scores his fifth touchdown in four games as a San Diego Charger as they just embarrassed the Denver Broncos. And as good as their performance was, the Los Angeles Raiders against the Seattle Seahawks in the kingdom, that's a place they don't like to play, had the ball bounce against them. This pass from Craig off the face mask of Mike Haynes into the hands of Darrell D.P. Turner. And 33-3 was the final score. They didn't play well at all. Well, the Raiders have beaten the Chargers seven straight times, and L.A.'s favorite again today, Howie Long, the all-pro defensive end, said maybe the Chargers better bring guns if they <laughs> plan to beat us today. They may need them. they got to protect Fouts to win. Well, the Chargers had a lot of offense geared up. They looked good last week. It might be a real good one here at San Diego. Brought to you by the Marines. Today, celebrating 210 proud years of history. By Canon. So advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35-millimeter photography. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. And the lights are on, but there's no threat of rain as Coach Tom Flores and his Raiders have come down to San Diego. The 52nd meeting over the years between these two teams, Don Coriel, his spirits greatly picked up by that showing last week, but this is the big one. Now, the Chargers kick it off. The ball's hit well downfield by Moschenko. And out of the end zone where Fulton Walker watches it go out for the touchback. And so the Raiders will go on offense first and ten. Mark Wilson at quarterback. He is 5-1 and one as a starter since Jim Plunkett was hurt. Wilson's quarterbacking number's not that good, but he has been a winner. And, of course, he has the superb Marcus Allen in his backfield. With Todd Christensen, the leading AFC receiver at tight end, the speed is Hester and Williams on the flanks. Offensive line is very big. And they've got a hold off of San Diego defense. It could come a blitz in over the slight Mark Wilson, still with a bit of a bad ankle. Hand off, and Marcus Allen breaks the crust and takes the ball to the 28-yard line. LSU, second and one after the nine-yard carry. Marcus Allen looks like he might have gotten to the first down mark. Coming out now as Wilson takes a look, and third and 12, he gets it away downfield. Christensen has the ball at the 47-yard line. That's a he was mistake. indeed uncovered, That's Trump, and it's an 18-yard gain and a first down. Raiders. Wilson gets time. Poorly thrown ball, but Toki Williams dives for it and gets it at the 40. It's a first down for the Raiders. He's been intercepted nine times, but he's done well, and at least he did in the first meeting with San Diego. Here's a pitch to Marcus Allen. Whoa. And Allen, a native of San Diego, darts inside the 30. He's down to the 28-yard line for yet another Raider first down. Let's drive on first down. Power football. Here comes Marcus Allen. He's down to the 25-yard line, a pickup of four on first down. Second down and six. Wilson, a lot of time in the end zone is Jesse Hester, but the ball is intercepted. Danny Walters came up, and he's got the ball. It is an interception, and the Chargers stop the Raider drive and take over the football. Second down in a long seven. Out stands in, swings it out. Look at the move by Gary Anderson. What a football player. He's out to the 47-yard line. Whoa, did you see the block by Lionel James? That goes last Sunday. Oh, well, it's a free ball. It looks like the Chargers got it at the 45-yard line. Well, Dan McElroy. Here's his three-back offense. Watch the pitch here. Here for McGee. Keeps it himself. And on... Second down and about 11, he gets it across midfield into the Danny Waller interception in the end zone of Mark Wilson. Swing pass here is Lionel Little Train James. Once he gets ahead up, he's a tough man to bring down. He's ahead for a charger first down to the 40-yard line. But he thinks big and plays big, and now Fouts takes a look deep. Man's open. Little Train James comes down with the ball to the 25-yard line. 14-yard gain, and now the Chargers move on as this game's been like a track meet. 3,000 yards passing for his career. Third all-time, the most of any active quarterback. Here's a pitch. Little train James is inside the 20, and Lionel James takes the ball down to the Raider 17-yard line, where the strong safety Mike Davis knocked him down. But Look at this formation. Both can catch it. 
Here's Fats in third and three. A lot more time this time, and there is Winslow open, but the ball, as you see, comes in high. That's one of the first times I've seen Kellen Winslow really show effects of that knee surgery. He's been hitting the close in field goals for San Diego. This one is spun up. And it looks like he's wide. He is. So the Chargers, like the Raiders, move down the field but get nothing. Trumpy, there's no score on the board. Both teams drove on their opening possessions but could not get points. Bumble. Marcus Allen, normally sure-handed, couldn't hold it. And all of a sudden, the Chargers have it right back. Down. Full house backfield here. now. Here's the handoff. Buford McGee is going to keep it himself, and he breaks the tackle to get down. Inside the 15 and down to the 10-yard line, he gained six before Reggie McKenzie ran him out. You can go. Second down and four. Dan Fouts with time, but nobody to throw to him. Here it is. Long coming in, and he puts it up, and it's caught for oh. a touchdown. West Chandler with a Hall of Fame catch. One hand, and he got the feet in. It was Fouts has time. Last time these two teams met, five sacks in the first half, three in the first quarter. West Chandler did not practice all week. Maybe he should never practice again with a catch like that. That was something. Right back to Marcus Allen. He breaks tackles, and look at Marcus Allen in open field. Across the 40, and finally they run him on, but he crosses midfield to the 49-yard line. A 31-yard gain, so they went right back to the money. He dropped the bag the last time, but then for the Raiders. Play taken. Mark Wilson with time to write a letter. Now he's got to hurry. They don't like him running, but this time he had to as he slides into the 41-yard line of San Diego. Got a good gain on the play, a first down carry. Stopped the opening drive when it looked like the Raiders were going to go into the end zone. Big rush, Wilson running for his life. Ooh. He's down. Mark Wilson playing with a partially separated shoulder took a hard lick. Recover it. Second down and seven for Wilson and the Raiders. He's got time. He's got an end. Jesse Hester's in the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. 35-yard scoring play as Hester, the rookie number one draft choice from Florida State, turned down the deep heat and broke it into the end zone, and we're going to have a tie game if Chris Barr can hit the extra point. And Mark Wilson has to throw. Only rushed three people. He stands back there and waits. And Hester, with outstanding speed, must have absolutely turned Hendy around. It wasn't even close. Six points, second touchdown of the year. Up with good field position as the day has gone for them. Marcus Allen always finds a way, and Marcus Allen hemmed in, puts on that stutter step move, finally moves out to the 38-yard line. He got the season. Everybody else took it five. He's it for the running game. Wilson is sacked back at the 31-yard line. Lee Williams, the big cat who picked up the fumble. Mark Wilson gets an open track. This might be a career run for Mark Wilson, a tall, angular young man from Brigham Young. 30 to play in the first half. Don Tricky with Bob Trumpy at San Diego. Wilson, all day long, he's intercepted again now. This one is picked up. Coming up with the ball is Carlos Bradley, who takes it back to the 42-yard line of Los Angeles. And so Mark Wilson, who this season has thrown for six touchdowns, has also thrown for 11 interceptions. And 10 in the Raiders pass rush will be a coming. Here's the option play again. Buford McGee pitches back to Anderson. Didn't get a whole lot, but it sure looked good as they got the ball down to the 37-yard line of Los Angeles. Third down and five. Big rush. Fout stands in. He gets it away, and the ball is caught by Kevin Winslow, and he takes it inside the 20. And down to the 17-yard line, a 19-yard gain. First, it looked like Fouts was going to be hit before he got it away. Then it looked like Winslow was not going to be able to get to it. He's hurt, too. Rod Martin was the man in coverage. I think that's his knee. He's, he's not been able to practice last in the last couple of weeks. Great one from Grambling, the all-time leading receiver in National Football League history, Charlie Joyner. To the end zone, little train can't get the ball. Might be a flag. There is not. James Davis covering on a play, but he sure didn't look like he was looking back at the ball. Thomas from 34. He's missed from 35. He's got this one, though. 
And the Chargers break the tie with 10 12 to play in the first half. They take a 10 to 7 lead. Now the stack backfield. They go to the first back through, and Spencer breaks it. Man, he would have gone a long way had not he been tripped by an ankle high tackle by Millen. A 12 yard gain as it was for the Chargers. In San Diego leads the game 10 7. Don Pricky with Don Trumpy as Gary Anderson breaks the first layer of defense and comes across the 40. Lead the game 10 to 7. Little train James has got a first down and more as he's out to midfield. Ohio State, they think he has the potential to be a superior NFL offensive lineman. We'll find out more about himself today with Long coming in, and that time Long. Oh. Here's an interception. The ball's picked off by Brad Van Pelt. And it was Long who set the whole thing up. He had a clean shot at Fouts who released the ball quickly going to Anderson. Brad Van Pelt, five times a pro bowler with the Giants, comes up with the ball and runs it back 20 yards. So the Raiders get it back and they get it in good position. The Raiders with the ball, they're trailing the Chargers 10 to 7. Christensen has the ball at the nine yard line. Christensen was a number one priority of the Charger defense, have not done it at least on two big plays, and Marcus Allen takes it down close to the goal line. That man thinks end zone. John used to sing about the rocket man. That's what Marcus Allen looks like when he goes over the top. But now he goes in motion. They give the ball to Frank Hawkins, and he goes in. So the Raiders look like a trap block there because they blasted it. Dan Fouts on second down and five. Swings it out to Kellen Winslow. He's hit hard and knocked out of bounds. But he got the first down where he moved. Mike Haynes hit him. Block, but he throws with discretion one of the lowest interception rates in the NFL. And he spreads the ball around. Everybody gets a look at it. A little train James this time, and he heads for the out of bounds line and gets there. Stops the clock with 121 to play. Here's Fouts, live action, long ball, going for it, and getting his West Chandler. He's down at the 45-yard line of Los Angeles. With a minute and eight seconds to play, the Chargers hit a long one, a 30-yard gainer. Get this first down up. Fouts throws, markers are down, incomplete at the 30, and the marker comes in in the secondary against Lester Hayes. For the Raiders. Marker down. Tip ball. Intercepted. Rod Martin got the ball. We'll see if the play goes. There was a marker down at the snap of the ball. Ball was intended for Kellen Winslow to run an excellent pattern. You know, it's everybody swings, but when Howie Long gets in there, all the swinging stops. <laughs> Penalty against the Raiders. Silver and black, but Outside, I don't think they brought that with him. Number 37 on the defense. Still second it out. Lester Hayes. Bounce is going to be pitching. No, he's going to Little Train. He gets some first down to the 31-yard line, so they're in field goal range. And the clock is stopped now with 24 seconds to play in the first half. Timeout Chargers, 13 to 10. Don Pricky with Bob Trumpy at San Diego. Dan Fouts gets time. Dan lets a man. West Chandler has the ball inside the 15-yard line. And the Chargers huddling. Now they're going into formation. Eight seconds. No timeouts left for San Diego. Four seconds. Here's the snap. Fouts throws it out of bounds with a second left. Wait to play at home. Thomas, who's missed once and hit once. And tie the game. Oh. He missed and it. And he's killing him. Bob Thomas misses another chip shot. And so the first half comes to an end. And the L.A. Raiders take a 13 to 10 lead. As much as we've ever been dominated by anybody. Right now, Fouts looks for a big play, and he has one downfield, oh. and the ball is caught by the second man. Was he inbounds? He was. Nothing to it. Chandler was trailing on the play. It caromed off Joyner, and Dan Fouts is down. Not set to go, though, on second down and seven. Here comes the rush. The oh, ball, right ball. little train James is wide open, and he makes the play at the seven-yard line. Big play by the little man. Out of there. Sets up very well, and he doesn't want to get a lot of steam on this ball, but he throws it as far as he possibly can. And I repeat, if this is a busted coverage all the way around. That's how open James is. He's standing there waiting for it. Please give me the fair catch of capability. First and goal, San Diego. To 10. Anderson. Straight up runner. You pointed out a lot like Marcus Allen. 
slashing into the line and down to the one yard line. Third and goal. Anderson loses the ball. And they'll have to settle for a field goal as it'll be fourth and goal from the six. And that's no guarantee either. Bob Thomas, you see his numbers with the misses from 30 and 35 yards. Moshenko holding that time he's not sure. Somebody tipped that ball and he still got it through. It looked clean to me. It goes up and through, and it's a tie game. Down in six now for the Raiders. Going from their 37-yard line. Allen looking for a crack, finds one out to the 42-yard line of Los Angeles. Carlos Bradley, who had the interception earlier, now third down and two now for the Raiders. <laughs> Allen got to where he had to go, crossed the 45-yard line, and he's good for a first down with a reception. The free safety for the Chargers, Jeffrey Dale, knocked him down. We're going to beat the Raiders. We're going to do it at the end. Christensen makes a first down catch, and he breaks free inside the 40, and finally they get him at the 38-yard line. Game time, 13-13, third quarter. Going for the route, and they get it down inside the five-yard line. Tim Moffat, a rookie wide receiver from Ole Miss. That's where they're going. Marcus Allen is into the end zone. Touchdown Raiders. One yard. Marcus Allen has now scored four touchdowns against the Chargers this season. It's in Canada. We'll be back with the Raiders in the lead, 20 to 13. Raider defense, big and confident, always keeping the pressure on. Buford McGee turns the corner though and dives ahead to that red marker. That's good for a first down for the Chargers. Chargers, second down and 10 coming up now. Anderson breaks it. Oh, he's a player. Gary Anderson straight ahead, rip breaks tackles. He's not that big, 200 pounds, but he's still in the league. Used to play here. You got to tell us who that is. Here is Tim Spencer open inside the 40, inside the 35. Matt Dundell is down to the 24-yard line of the Raiders. To the Raiders. Los Angeles leads 20 to 13. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. Down Cricky with Bob Trumpy at San Diego. Kevin Winslow with a penalty marker down. He's not down. He's going in. Winslow takes on Kepler. Kevin Winslow's in the end zone. There is a marker down, though, and it's in the Raiders' secondary. Final change. Yep, big as life. Gets it out to Gary Anderson. Let's watch Lionel James down here near side of the field, Don. He's out here by himself. And he'll have Mike Davis in coverage. Oh, there is. Playing James. He's going in. Touchdown, San Diego. Brilliant. Smallest player in the league right now. He's the biggest man in San Diego. It's an eight seconds to play in the third quarter. It is San Diego 21, L.A. 20. Now they're ruling no good. Yeah, that's today. That's today. That is a season for a lot of guys. Here's a hand up to Marcus. To the 30 on second and eight. Game tied, third and five for the Raiders. Third quarter. Christensen, he's been eating him up all day. Swinging out of that tight end position, getting to the open area of the zone, and he's ahead for a first down with a 13-yard reception. Wilson. Oh, open is Jesse Hester. If the play goes, he's going in, and there's no flags. A 54-yard touchdown pass play. Jesse Hester, the rookie from Ole Miss, the number one draft choice, who they're looking to as their speed burner of the future, has been in the end zone twice today. Steve, watch what happens. Hester, just a short little pattern. Danny Walters in coverage. And you see Marcus Allen does a good job on a block. 54 yards later, another big play Los Angeles Raiders. They lead by six, soon to be seven. Second down and seven. Fouts play faking. Here's the big rush and Patel. The nose tackle gets him. Dan Fouts is down. And writhing in pain. Dallas is in the lead. And over end punt hit downfield by Moshenko. Fielding it on the run is Mike Haynes. He's across midfield down to the 47-yard line of San Diego. A 39-yard punt and an 8-yard return. And the Raiders have the ball in the lead when we come back. With the ball, third down and seven. They get Wilson. Markers down, Fred Robinson. Big dog from Miami, they call him. And a personal foul call against the defense. 
77 to 20. 13.09 to play in the game. Hawkins stood up at the 20 yard line. He'll be short of the first down by about three yards. Jeff Dale, the rookie free safety, made the knockdown. Over San Diego. Chargers looking to get the ball now if they can. It'll be third down and a long two for Los Angeles. Hawkins, the lone setback. Wilson takes a look. Tip ball. Fourth down. Earl Wilson might have had a hand on the ball. Number between the 40 and the 49. He's two for eight. Snap and set down good, and he is wide left. He didn't get there. So it's still a seven-point game, Raiders, but the Chargers get the ball back. Dan Fox got a man. Good for nine. Out to the 29-yard line. Eric Correale is going to taxi a little bit more. Keep it on the ground. They're doing now. Anderson slashing for the first down. He gets it. Backfield. Can accelerate like sports cars. There's a swing. Oh. Lionel James comes out with the ball at the 43-yard line. Playing about. Here's his formation again now. It's hard to tell exactly what the Chargers are going to do. Third and seven. He gets it away just before he's hit. Kellen Winslow is out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Raiders lead at 27 to 20. Lionel James, look at him go inside the 25. He's down to the 23-yard line. Wow. All those big Raiders hit him. He gets up John Adam looking to get the ball again. Third down and less than two. Fouts play fake and swings it out. Here's Anderson inside the 20. First down and more. He's knocked down. He's going in. Touchdown. 21 yards. Extra point is good and the game is tied. He's still got some left. Marcus Allen gets the ball and takes it out to the 20-yard line. He got four, maybe five. Like all the great ones, the more they get it, the more they like it. Marcus Allen now runs a pattern as Wilson takes a look. Swings it out. Goes to Hawkins, and he's ahead for a Raider first down out to the 30-yard line. Most bar gives it to him. And Todd Christensen makes another first down reception for the Raiders. In this tie game, third down and seven. A lot of speed on both flanks. Lone setback is Hawkins. Here comes the rush. Wilson gets time. The goal is caught by Christensen, and he fights his way ahead. It looks like he has the first down to the 47. That's to go. First down. Marcus Allen has plenty left as he's down to the 36-yard line. He has another Raider first down with 2.45 to play. Over 100 yards and certainly didn't look tired on that play, did he? 25 carries. Go first and 10 from the 37. Hawkins turns the corner and he's down inside the 25-yard line. Gil Bird and Jeff Dale, the safety's got him as we're going to wind down to the two-minute warning. An 11-yard run by Frank Hawkins. Few screen, 46, running a pattern. Wilson takes a look at him. Throws. Christensen is in the end zone for a touchdown. I don't believe it. 24 yards and a touchdown. It's not over yet, though. 149 to play. Low five. A whole new way to celebrate. These guys have experienced every celebration there is on a football field. Just will try to get in the end zone. And down by seven. Bouts looks. He's got Anderson. And he is a load. This guy's got more. Look at Anderson. He's inside the 40. Look at he's still going. And Anderson's down to the 33-yard line. Bounce goes to Little Train James. Look at him go. Up the middle, he's down to the 19-yard line. 123 to play and running. For the Chargers, 34 for the Raiders. So San Diego has to hit into the end zone. Fouts goes down at the 28. Only the second sack of him today. The game clock now shows 102 to play, but a big down arrives. It's going to be third down coming up. Holy, number 45 on the defense. Touchdown! Big rush coming, and here it comes. Fout stands in, lets it go. Penalty markers down, man is open. Touchdown, Charlie Joyner! 14 yards and a touchdown. That's going to be defensive offsides. Touchdown counts. That's to play. The game is tied at 34. 
Well, look once again at the touchdown by the San Diego Chargers. A very critical touchdown by the San Diego Chargers. And I thought this ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Time the defense. You see the full blitz coming. Martin. Well, not tipped. What a catch by Charlie Joyner. He dropped one earlier, but had plenty of room on Sam Seal. Converted wide receiver. And a tie ball game. Throw it in the air. Tail. You call it tail? It's head. head. You want the ball? Dear Charlie, we want the ball. Pretty basic decisions taking a while to make. Well, Rod Martin doesn't know what goal to defend. Los Angeles won the toss. No, no, no. To no, no, no. San Diego won the San toss. San Diego, yeah. First down, takes a look, swings it out. He's got a man, but not for much. Gain of three is all. Bounce. If they pick up the blitz, goes downfield. The ball is caught out to the 45-yard line. Looked like Pete Holohan. Wow. And just flies. Anderson is down to the 37-yard line. We're in overtime. The game is tied 34 all. It was a 22-yard run. His career. Bounce. Throw. He's got Lionel James. He's in field goal range, and he's not done till he gets to the 17-yard line. First down. Spencer might get it straight. Now they're going to another runner. They're going to give it to Lionel James, and he's going to take it in for a winning touchdown. The smallest man in the NFL is eight feet tall. Lionel Little Crane James wins it. Look at him. He's eight feet tall now. Caesar was never as big in Rome as this man's going to be in San Diego tonight. 50 yards and a touchdown, 11 catches, 167 yards and a touchdown, and one player, Matt Mellon, put a hand on him for the last 17 yards. Let's watch it from another angle. A great job by the offensive line. McKnight, Clappin, Kowalski, Masick, White, Lachey. So the game is over. The Chargers win. We'll be back to San Diego after this. site is San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. The matchup is AFC West Division rivals the Chargers and the Los Angeles Raiders. Now Charger fans are none too pleased with the Raiders lately. In fact San Diego has not beaten the Silver and Black since 1981. The last seven meetings between these two teams have produced Raider victories and probably even brought a smile to the face of head coach Tom Flores. But Flores himself is not too happy. Even though Los Angeles enters this game in a first place tie with Denver, they were hammered a week earlier by the Seahawks. And the inconsistency of quarterback Mark Wilson remains a problem. Wilson has completed only 47% of his passes and has yet to show that he can provide leadership in the passing game to complement the running of Marcus Allen. On the other hand, the Chargers possess one of the game's toughest and most consistent quarterbacks in Dan Fouts. Fouts, as always, has the San Diego offense at the top of the NFL. And his exceptional ability to put points on the board against any defense is among the greatest the league has ever seen. Two weeks earlier, on a Monday night in front of a national television audience, Fouts and the Chargers were humbled by a Raider defense that simply overpowered San Diego's offensive line. But you can count on things being quite a bit different this time around, no matter how tough that Raider defense is. These are two teams coming off totally different performances in their previous games, 
The Raiders were beaten by Seattle while the Chargers surprisingly overwhelmed Denver. For San Diego, this meeting with the Raiders could well determine whether they have a chance to be true playoff contenders or whether they will simply be another 500 team. From Southern California, it's an important division matchup. The San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles Raiders on the NFL Game of the Week. Surprisingly, the most telling aspect of the early part of this contest was the strong play of the San Diego defense, the worst rated unit in the AFC. But the men in blue had shut down the Broncos in their previous game in their finest defensive performance of the season. And they continued to play aggressively and well against the Raiders. Number 23, Danny Walters intercepted Mark Wilson's pass in the end zone to foil the Raiders' first offensive possession. And then later in the first quarter, the Chargers were more than happy to pounce on a loose ball caused by a bad exchange between Wilson and Marcus Allen. Number 99, Lee Williams was in the right place at the right time and his recovery deep in Raider territory set up the game's first touchdown, a Dan Fouts to West Chandler strike of 10 yards. Chandler's juggling tightrope walk at the back of the end zone was his sixth scoring reception of the season and deserves another look. While Chandler's brilliant catch was the payoff, it was really Fouts' ability to remain poised under the pressure of the Raider rush that made the play possible. The end result was the touchdown, and with 10 minutes gone in the opening period, San Diego led 7-0. The Raiders wasted little time in coming back. A six-play drive was highlighted by two big games, one on the ground and one in the air. First, Marcus Allen slithered through the Charger defense for 32 yards. And then to complete the swift attack, Mark Wilson nailed rookie wide receiver Jesse Hester for a 35-yard touchdown. Hester, number 84, was the man the Raiders drafted in the first round to replace Cliff Branch. The veteran speedster who has simply gotten older. As a rookie, Hester has not yet shown the consistency that his predecessor Branch possessed. But there's no question he has the speed to be the Raiders' next big play receiver. The Raiders had rebounded quickly. As the first quarter came to a close, the count was even. San Diego 7 and Los Angeles 7. In the second quarter, with a score tied, the Charger defense again took control. This was certainly not the same defense that was routinely stepped on week after week by just about all of the league's offenses. Defensive end Lee Williams, number 99, sacked Wilson to enhance his status as one of the NFL's rising young pass rushers. And then when linebacker Carlos Bradley, number 50, picked off a Mark Wilson pass early in period two, the Chargers had their third turnover in just over a quarter of play.
Bradley's interception led to a field goal of 34 yards by Bob Thomas as San Diego again pulled ahead, this time 10-7. to What determines whether the Chargers win or lose is not the play of their outstanding offense, year in and year out the top rated in the league, but the performance of their defense, annually one of the league's worst. If their defense can become just average, then the few mistakes that Dan Fouts and the offense make will not be as monumental. The San Diego offense made one of its few mistakes late in the first half when Raider linebacker Brad Van Pelt, number 91, intercepted Fouts, giving Los Angeles excellent field position and the chance to score the go-ahead touchdown. The Raiders would do just that. A Wilson pass to tight end Todd Christensen, number 46, brought the ball inside the Charger 10. And a few plays later, Frank Hawkins barreled in from a yard out for the score. But in what would turn out to be one of the game's most important plays, the Chargers blocked the extra point, and Los Angeles' lead was only 13 to 10. That's the way the first half ended, with the Raiders nursing a three-point advantage. On their first offensive possession of the second half, the Chargers would tie the game. The big play was a 39-yard pass from Fouts to the NFL's most explosive all-purpose player, Lionel James, number 26. James' leaping catch was the play that put San Diego in field goal range. And when the Chargers were stopped short of the goal line, Bob Thomas drilled his second three-pointer of the game, and it was all even at 13. This seesaw battle of division rivals was just getting started, however. The touchdowns would follow at a dizzying pace as the third quarter progressed. And it was the Raiders that began the roller coaster ride, putting together an efficient nine play drive that featured the passing of quarterback Wilson. This sideline strike to rookie Tim Moffitt, number 83, set up the go ahead score. A one-yard leap by Marcus Allen, whose eight rushing touchdowns leads all NFL backs. The Raiders were now in front 20 to 13, but this matchup was nothing like the first time these two teams played on Monday night a few weeks ago, when the Raiders manhandled San Diego. Midway through the third quarter, the Raiders had the lead, but the Chargers were not about to lie down and play dead. What followed would be as exciting and as thrilling as any NFL game could ever be. And when it was all over, the Chargers would have the last lap. The Chargers entered the game with the league's third worst rushing attack. But against the Raiders' number two ranked defense, San Diego clearly had the better of the matchup as scatbacks Buford McGee, Lionel James, and Gary Anderson virtually ran at will. Even fullback Tim Spencer, number 43, got into the act, throwing crisp blocks and even making important catches, like this one late in period three. Then San Diego appeared to tie the game when Fouts hit the recently reactivated Kellen Winslow, number 80, for an apparent touchdown. But just when Kellen thought he had his first score of the 85 season, a Charger penalty took it away. No matter, just two plays later, Fouts spotted Lionel James and the NFL's mighty might toted it in for his third touchdown grab of the year. <laughs> On
On a team blessed with astounding pass catchers, Lionel is the club's leading receiver. That would run true to form in this game as well, as James would end up with 11 catches against the Raiders, and a good deal more as events would bear out. This game was now a far cry from the L.A. San Diego affair of just two weeks before. The Raiders had kicked sand in the Chargers' faces then, but that 97-pound weakling had now turned into a dynamo. The Chargers appeared to have the momentum clearly in their favor. But just when the Raiders needed a big play, they got one from heads-up Jesse Hester, who turned a routine quick out into his second touchdown catch of the game. The 54-yard score returned the lead to the Raider camp. And then the third period ended with the Silver and Black sending a very harsh message to Dan Fouts that retaking that lead would not come easily. Number 71, Bill Pickell's sack was a resounding blow that clearly shook the Charger quarterback. But Fouts is a man made of stern stuff. Dan is a mortal lock for the Pro Football Hall of Fame someday, as much for his leadership and toughness, as well as his eye-popping statistics. Fox would shake off the blow and return to fight another day, meeting the very next drive, while the Chargers' defense returned the favor to L.A. San Diego held the Raiders to just a field goal attempt, and when Chris Barr's kick sailed wide, the Chargers got the ball back for yet another march towards a game-tying score. With around 12 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, Fouts was back in business, returning to reliable Lionel James for yet another picture-perfect pass play. Seeing the obvious success of throwing to his backs, Fouts hooked up with Gary Anderson, and with lightning quickness, the game was tied for the fourth time. Seven minutes now remained in this game of sizzling showstoppers, but incredibly, the real drama, more catches, comebacks, and cliffhanging plays was still to come. Charger defensive captain Billy Ray Smith had made one of the game's biggest plays in the first half, a blocked extra point that helped keep this match tied. But now Smith hoped to rally his unit for some more big plays. Unfortunately for San Diego, they would not be forthcoming, as the Raiders put together a masterful drive of steady if unspectacular gains that gobbled up yardage and the clock. Running from Marcus Allen and Frank Hawkins put L.A. in position to take the lead again. This time the heroes were quarterback Mark Wilson and tight end Todd Christensen. Christensen, the AFC's leading receiver, had his fourth touchdown reception of the season, capping a drive that had used up over five minutes. At last, it looked as if the Raiders had finally taken the game away from their AFC West brethren. But a minute and 43 seconds still remain. Plenty of time for Fouts and company to unseat L.A. from its lead. While the Raiders gathered round for an unusual-looking post-touchdown jubilee, one of those rare moments when seating assignments are important, the Chargers did some brain-racking of their own. Clearly, San Diego could move on the Raiders. They had proven that time and again all afternoon. And Coach Don Coriel had the best man for the job in Fouts, a fellow whose 400-plus passing yards today made him the only quarterback in league history to post such numbers in six different games. 
So with time on the wane, Fouts went to work, and darned if he didn't pull another rabbit out of his hat. Gary Anderson juked his way for 38 yards, and then Lionel James swept left end for 14 more as the Chargers had the Raiders scratching their heads in amazement. With just under a minute to play, Fouts tied the game with his fourth touchdown pass of the day. This one to the NFL's all-time leading receiver. For most of the game, the Chargers runners had made a majority of the catches. But in the clutch, when it counts most, the man you want to handle the football is Charlie Joyner. And when the 37-year-old pass-catching wizard hauled in this score, the game was tied and headed for overtime. Ben Joyner continued to live right as he represented the locals for the coin toss. San Diego won the flip and elected to take the ball. On a day when both teams combined for over a thousand yards in total offense, the choice seemed obvious. And the Chargers proved how obvious it was by taking the ball and marching right down the field on the league's fourth best defensive squad. After a key catch by Pete Holohan, Gary Anderson skirted right end for big yardage as the crowd seemed to sense that an upset victory was close at hand. Bouts then went to the redoubtable Lionel James, whose nifty scamper was but a prelude to the most exciting single play of the Chargers' 1985 season. With just under four minutes gone in overtime, the smallest man in pro football set off one of Jack Murphy Stadium's biggest ever celebrations. The game-winning run was the last play of a remarkable day for James. Little Train finished with 345 all-purpose yards from running, receiving, and kick returns, the second highest total in pro football history. But it was these last 17 yards that were the biggest. The 40 to 34 Charger triumph snapped a seven game losing streak against the Raiders. And it also thrust the once floundering San Diegans back into the thick of the AFC West race. Before the largest home crowd in team history, the Chargers had put on an epic showpiece with the rival Raiders and had prevailed. Records had fallen like autumn leaves. Bouts passing marks, James all-purpose plays, team offensive output. But as the California sun set on the scene, the most important fact of all was that San Diego had come back time and again to beat a formidable foe. Earning self-respect and a chance to do it again in games that would now have real significance on the outcome of the Chargers' topsy-turvy season.